I asked, I asked the audience to rise, and gentlemen, please remove your hats as the CHS Symphonic Choir in the direction of Mrs. Jennifer Shively with soloist Jamie Howard leads us in the Star Spangled Banner. Good evening and welcome. I'm Fred Holland, principal of Chillicothe High School, and it's my distinct pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Uh, we have obviously a very warm night, but it's great to see what I think is probably the largest group of people to honor a class in, in at least my recent memory and maybe of all time. So I appreciate you coming out. Let me start with some introductions. Joining me tonight on the stage, from my right to your left, Dr. Thomas Snyder, Executive Director, Pickaway Ross Joint Vocational School. <laughs> Mr. Bill Dennis, Dean of Students. <laughs> Mr. Gary Newsom. Athletic Administrator. <laughs> Mrs. Elizabeth Montgomery, Assistant Principal. <laughs> Reverend Troy Gray, President, Board of Education. <laughs> Dr. Dennis Leon, Superintendent of Schools. Also present tonight, Board of Education members, Mr. Ron Bettine, is that here? <laughs> Mr. Rick Vollmer. <laughs> Mr. Gus Comstock. <laughs> and Mr. Monty Weaver. Also, Ms. Joyce Atwood, Assistant Superintendent. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence Butler, Director of Personnel. <laughs> Mr. Stacy Overly, Treasurer. <laughs> Mr. Bob Ryan, Director of Pupil Services. and two very special people to this class. Mrs. Sharon Patrick, Senior Class Advisor. <laughs> and 
and Mr. David Higgs, Senior Guidance Counselor. I'd also wish to recognize the entire staff of Chillicothe City Schools. I see graduation as a district-wide culminating activity since it takes a consistent effort from kindergarten through the 12th grade. I particularly wish to recognize the following staff members for their assistance to this class. Secretaries Mrs. Karen Streitberger, Mrs. Nidra Downs, Mrs. Davida Denowitz, and Mrs. Vicki Kennard. I know I joined the class of 1998, and their thanks to all these people who helped them to get here today. I further wish to recognize a very significant group of people who have stood by these graduates through good and not, and that is their parents and loved ones who are gathered here tonight. I congratulate each one of you. Your pride tonight is immense and very well deserved. And final recognition goes to the people in the blue and white down here. You and I walked into CHS together from some four short years ago. I've genuinely enjoyed watching your development and growth. I've also treasured the opportunity to get to know you as people. I commend you on the fact that your class has been awarded over $2 million in scholarships. Class, I'm very proud of all of you. You are a group of genuinely nice people. I send you on with this advice. Work hard, be smart, and always, always, always do the right thing. This will bring you happiness. Thank you. We'll move now to our student speakers. Our first student speaker is Preston Roberts. Preston has been a four-year member of the CHS Marching Band. He is president of the National Honor Society and was a member of the Quiz Bowl team. Preston has received a full tuition scholarship from Brigham Young University and has also been awarded the National Elk Scholarship. Preston's priorities are well-defined as he will attend BYU for one year to study microbiology. He will then go on a two-year mission for his church and then return to Brigham Young to continue preparation for a medical career. The title of his speech, speech is The Breakdown of the American Family. I will be presenting him with a valedictory medal in recognition of his achieving co-valedictorian status. Preston Roberts. Good evening. I'd like to take this, I'd like to welcome parents, faculty members, administration, board members, friends, and most importantly, you, fellow classmates, to this, our commencement ceremony of the 1998 graduating class. The world has wronged me, and I couldn't take it anymore. Luke Woodham, 16 years old, Pearl, Mississippi, October 1st, 1997. Many of those who follow the events of this nation should recognize that statement as the utterance of one involved in several schoolyard massacres. Luke Woodham of Pearl, Mississippi, Michael Carneal of West Paducah, Kentucky, and Joseph Colt Todd have each been charged as adults for the murder of several schoolmates. When the massacres that took place in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and more recently in Washington State are included, there have been five acts of fatal violence committed by juveniles at, sco at schools in the last eight months, a figure that is very alarming. Over the last eight months, many people have been searching for answers to the questions raised, questions that you and I must eventually answer. How could children perform such horrible acts, and what could have led these children down the pathway to murder? In analysis of the factors involved in the cases of juvenile violence that involve a firearm, one domestic factor was present in nearly every situation, lack of a stable family. 
Many of the alleged shooters in the schoolyard massacres came from troubled families. The parents of Mitchell Johnson, the alleged shooter in Jonesboro, Arkansas, were divorced, and Mitchell's father was a convicted drug addict. In Edinburgh, Andrew Worst was said to talk frequently of hating his parents. Luke Woodham told fellow students in Mississippi that he despised his divorced mother, whom he, whom he allegedly stabbed to death with a, with a butcher knife before slaying two of his students. In a world where material possessions are taking hold of the lives of many people, it's imperative that we, as a society, turn back to a time when the family was the main focus of the lives of many people. It is our responsibility as parents and as future parents to instill within our children the values and morals that will help curb the problems of childhood violence. A child who is reared in a stable home where a strong support system is available and in which feelings of unity can be felt is much more likely to develop into a productive member society compared to one who is raised in an unstable and unsupportive home. That the family has a profound effect upon the development cannot be denied. Carl Jung, a prominent psychologist, stated, the little world of childhood with its familiar surroundings is a model of the greater world. The more intensively the family has stamped its character upon the child, the more it will feel and see its earlier miniature world in the bigger world of adult life. Naturally, this is not a conscious and intellectual process. A child cannot consciously control what type of character he or she will possess when they attain adulthood because that is determined through both environmental and domestic factors. It is up to the family, namely the parents, to foster the proper atmosphere in order to produce a nonviolent child. As we approach a time in our life where marriage becomes more of a reality and we begin having families of our own, it is essential that we, as parents, teach our children those things necessary for a reformation of current societal attitudes. In an attempt to reverse the trend of present childhood violence, there are several fundamental ideals that each family should diligent, diligently try to establish in their homes. The establishment and integration of these ideals into the lives of family members, especially children, can potentially be that which is needed to end the horrors that have rocked the educational world these last eight months. The first of these is love. Everybody needs to feel loved. Respect, mutual respect for individuality and, re and authority of family members. The third is obedience. Every child must learn to obey. Discipline, children must know their limits. And with discipline, children should know that there are consequences for their actions. Hard work, children must develop a work ethic so that they know that whatever they receive in life was because of their own hard work and determination. Responsibility, children must learn to be responsible members of society. Patriotism, children should be taught to love and respect this country in which we enjoy the greatest freedoms of all the world. Education, parents must provide the foundation of knowledge to ensure future success. And finally, gratitude. Children should, ne should be taught never to be ashamed to say thank you. If we as parents and role models are able to instill in our children these values, the, pr the problems that, so that society faces can possibly be minimized. The development of a child begins in the family and it is our responsibility as parents and future parents to be examples of these values to our children. We must be the ones to reverse the present trends of childhood violence. We must be the ones to prevent such atrocities from occurring in the future. And this will only be possible if we begin in our own families to teach our children the standards by which they are expected to abide. So we do not have to bear another statement such as, kill me please, I can't believe I did that. Michael Carneal, 14 years old, West Paducah, Kentucky, December 1st, 1997. For the safety and security of ourselves and our future generation, we cannot fail. Thank you. Our second speaker is Neil Patel. Neil took full advantage of our many activities at CHS by participating in the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society and serving as president, National Art Honor Society, also as president, Latin Club, Student Council, Boys State, and was a three-year letterman in soccer. He has been admitted to the Ohio State University Honors Program as a university scholar. He has been awarded the Excellence Scholarship and the Scar Scarlet and Gray Scholarship. He will pursue a double major, major in genetics and molecular biology and will prepare for a career in medicine. The title of his speech is The Past, Present, and Future. I will also be recognizing him with a medal signifying his status as co-valedictorian. Neil Patel.
Good evening, friends, families, teachers, honored guests, and fellow students. Well, we have finally made it, and I'm sure some of you are happy to see us leave CHS. We have been quite rambunctious, and for that, we are truly sorry. But hey, didn't we bring laughter to everyone's life? Aristotle once said, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. I agree with this comment, but I think he failed to mention anything about the composition of his speech. I think the quote should read like this. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet, unless you are a valedictorian and are asked to give a spe speech at your graduation. <laughs> this day has come for our turn as a graduating class of 1998 to be here. It's been a long road, but we finally made it. As we take one of our first big steps in life, we can look back on our lives at Chillicothe High School with some frustration and great pleasure. And I'm sure we will always remember a few of the adventures we had in our high school careers. But the memories that will be the brightest in our minds will be the ones created tonight. Tonight, we show off all that determination when we as seniors reach the pinnacle of our high school careers. We have worked hard to make this night possible. We lift our heads up high and show pride in all of our accomplishments here at Chillicothe High School. Tonight, we say goodbye. In his poem, The Road Not Taken, Robert Frost emphasizes, two roads diverging in a yellow wood, and I sorry that I could not take both. Two roads diverging in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that, that has made all the difference. Our lives have traveled the same path for the past 12 years, with a few that have merged with us along the way. But this path is about to split. Some may again cross, and yet they may not. But the friends that we have made in the past will remain with us forever. Throughout the years, we have helped each other along the way. Now, we must take the next big step on our own. We all have our special dreams which we wish to follow. However, this is not a beginning, or excuse me, this is not an end for us. It is a beginning, the beginning of the rest of our lives. Tomorrow is another day, and there will be important choices we will have to make. Some of us may decide to go on to college. Some of us may decide to go straight into the workforce. Or maybe a few will choose a career in the armed forces. No matter what we want to do, our future is wide open, and new opportunities are waiting for us. I encourage us to give the best to whatever we decide to do with our lives. I want us to become the next generation of teachers, lawyers, businessmen, doctors, nurses, and accountants. I want us to do these jobs with pride, dignity, and a genuine desire to succeed. Moreover, as America moves into the 21st century, we need new leaders to push our country forward. I challenge us to become those future leaders of our community, our state, and our nation. I would like to take this time to wish my fellow graduates success on their desired paths in life. Remember that success is not measured by the position that you reach in life, as by the obstacles which you have overcome while trying to reach that position. We will have to earn our place in society, just as we have earned the, the right to stand here tonight as graduates. Even in the face of this challenge, I have faith in us and in all of our abilities. I am confident we will succeed. I challenge us to carry ourselves to a whole new level. I challenge all of us to be pioneers of new technology and new procedures in our chosen professions. We must strive to better mankind as a whole. We inherit a world with so many problems. These problems can be solved by some great and original thinkers. And I believe that we are those thinkers that we can and will build new paths to a better future. We cannot listen to what others want us to do. We must listen to ourselves. Society, family, friends do not know what we must do. Only we know. And only we can do what is right for us. So start right now. You will need to work hard. You will need to overcome many obstacles. You will need to go against the judgment of other people and you will need to bypass their prejudices. But you can have whatever you want if you try hard enough. 
So start right now, and you will live a life designed by you and for you, and you will love your life. Thank you. Our third student speaker will be Shannon Smith. Shannon is a top scholar overall, but excelled particularly in our music department. She was a four-year member of the marching band, concert band, and orchestra. She was a field commander for two years and the concert master for the orchestra. She was selected to play with the Columbus Symphony Youth Orchestra and the All-State State Orchestra, All Orchestra. She will be attending Ohio Wesleyan University where she has been awarded the trustee scholarship the Music Merit Scholarship, and the Ohio Board of Regents Scholarship. She will pursue a double major in psychology and music. The title of her speech is What I Really Learned in High School. I will be presenting Shannon with the Salutatorian Medal, Shannon Smith. Welcome family and friends, and congratulations fellow graduates. If you were to ask my friends or my teachers what they believe I've learned during the past four years of high school, they might say that I've improved my skills playing the violin, that I've learned to speak Spanish, that I've learned to write a research paper, or that I've learned to conduct the band. And these things are all true, and they're all very important to me. But when I look towards the future, the things I've learned during high school that will help me the most are not things that could have been taught in a classroom. Yes, I could have read them in a book or listened to a teacher say them, but in order to really understand them, I had to learn them for myself. First of all, I've learned that adversity, when overcome, makes one stronger. Webster's Dictionary defines adversity as a state of unhappiness, misfortune, or distress. At some point in our lives, all of us have or will face periods of adversity. Henry Miller once said, what seems nasty, painful, evil, can become a source of beauty, joy, and strength if faced with an open mind. Every moment is a golden one for him who has the vision to see it as such. Four years ago, when I entered high school, I had faced very little adversity in my life, but during the last two years, while battling an illness, I too have had my share of problems. I can't stand here and say that I'm glad that these problems have, have occurred, but I can say that when I compare the person I was four years ago with the person that I am now, I can't help but notice how much stronger I have become. The problems I have faced have really changed my perspective on life in many ways. And this will not only change how I deal with problems that I face today, but it will also affect how I handle problems that may arise in the future. We must remember that after the storm has passed, adversity makes us stronger, more independent, more confident, and better able to empathize with the struggles of others. Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And we must remember that even in our times of greatest hardship, we are still responsible for our actions. Secondly, I've learned that I must choose my priorities. In high school, we must choose between academics, extracurricular activities, social activities, and many times find a balance between them. We must decide whether it's more important to enjoy the moment or to plan for the future. We must find friends who have similar values to ours friends that make us a priority in their lives as we have made them a priority in our lives. We must decide whether we should do the thing that is popular and convenient or whether we should do the thing that we know inside is right. I feel that all the choices I've made during high school, both right and wrong, have helped form me as the person that I am today. And they've helped me learn to choose my priorities and many times to balance them. Finally, but most importantly, I've learned that the true joy in life is found in simple pleasures and special moments. 
These are the moments that we will remember for our, all of our lives. For example, my freshman year, I don't remember the details of our homecoming dance, but I do remember when we went out to dinner beforehand how my date laughed at me because I ordered french fries and applesauce at a fancy restaurant. I don't remember the details of every football game I've been to the past four years, but I will never forget all the bus trips home with my friends in the band and all the interesting conversations that we had. I'll always remember the times when my friends and I played in the snow like little children, the times when we scared ourselves watching horror movies, and the times when our study groups somehow got a little bit off the subject and turned into long discussions about life. These are the times that put the true joy in our sometimes stressful lives. Hopefully, we haven't been so busy planning the past year that we've overlooked precious moments with our family and friends that we will never be able to repeat. And so I ask you today, take a, big, take a moment out of your busy schedule and look around at the people who love and care about you and make a moment of joy of your own which you can carry with you forever. Thank you. Brad Kleparik is our final student speaker. Brad is a fine student, but he's excelled especially in the fine arts at CHS as a musician, singer, and thespian. He was a four-year member of the orchestra, marching band, and Cavalite show choir. He was selected to the Columbus Symphony Youth Orchestra as their principal bassist. Brad also participated in 14 drama productions while at CHS. Brad has been awarded the DAR Good Citizen Award, the Kindler Orchestra Scholarship, and we're very pleased that he is the first Chillicothe High School student to win the very prestige, prestigious Cutler Scholarship to Ohio University. He will be studying interpersonal communications and minoring in music. The title of his speech is, If I Could Do It All Again, Brad Kleparik. Thank you. Welcome to the, all of those here today and those who cannot be here but are within our hearts. As we sit here today, we have many questions about what the future will hold for us. Will I find a satisfying career? Will I make enough money? Where will I live? Will I fit in at my new school or my new job? Not only are we thinking of what lies ahead, but also of what has passed. We remember our experiences with our friends and family who join us here today. It is during these times of reflections when we as graduates often hear, this is the best time of your life. And when I was your age, and of course, if I could do it all over again. Usually these remarks are answered with a slight smile and a roll of the eyes. But today, perhaps these words are more than just a cliche. To this point in our lives, we have always known what tomorrow would bring. School, sports, a concert, perhaps an after school job, but where will we be tomorrow, a year, five or ten years from now? Do we want to someday say, if I could do it all over again? If I could just have one more try? Or do we want to say that we wouldn't change anything? We now have the power to reach for goals that will enable us to someday say, I have no regrets. Let's think back to the last four years of our lives. Could we have trained a little harder, practiced a little more, study just a few hours longer. There are graduates among us who have come, overcome overwhelming disadvantages. Their hard work, dedication, and the strong support from their friends here have given them the edge they needed to succeed. As we leave here today, we each go our separate ways, but we can always rely on each other for love and support. Someone once said, the only failures are the ones who never try. We must realize and pursue our dreams. Together, we have the capability to achieve great things. To my fellow graduates, it has been an honor to have spent the last four years with you. I wish you all the happiness and success in the coming years. Thank you.
And now the superintendent of Chillicothe City Schools, Dr. Dennis Leone. Good evening. I'd like to say that it's certainly glad to be here tonight. This is a wonderful evening. This is my first Chillicothe High School graduation, and I am looking forward to many more. I've had the opportunity over the past eight and a half months to get to know a number of the students that are sitting here in front of me. And I'll tell you, I have been very impressed by the leadership abilities of the group of seniors. As Mr. Holland said, they are genuine good people. They worked hard, they care about each other, and they are fun to be around. I've also been impressed by the fact that this year's graduates demonstrate a commitment to their families, a commitment to their friends, and a commitment to their faith. It is my hope that they keep these commitments in the future. And remember, that if at times things don't go quite the way they're supposed to, it's so important to have your family, your friends, and your faith to turn to. In recent years, I've had the opportunity to see a lot of high school programs, a lot of high school graduations. And it's very easy for me to make this statement here this evening, and that is that Chillicothe High School is a very good high school, and the class of 1998 has every reason to be proud to be a graduate of CHS. I wish this year's graduates well, and the best of luck in the future. They've earned it, and they deserve it. Thank you. And our Board of Education President, Reverend Troy Gray. I was sitting there a few moments ago just sitting that if hell is this hot, I don't want any part of it. It is warm in here tonight. <laughs> First, giving honor to God, indeed, I'm glad to be here today, and I believe in giving credit to God because he's the reason we are where we are right now. Legislators many years ago took away prayer and ceremonies such as this, and even in school. But what they fail to realize is that as long as there are tests in school, there will always be prayer in school. <laughs> I'm going to try to be brief here today because I know that I'm on a time limit, but I would say to the graduates of 1998, I try to write each and every one of you an individual letter. I hope that you got that to kind of talk to you and to tell you how I felt about your success and that you could be anything that you want to be. But as I was sitting here a moment ago, 18 years ago, I graduated from Chillicothe High School. I sat where you sit, and I had a lot of thoughts in my mind about what I wanted to be and where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. But one of the things that I want to leave you with here tonight and then I'm going to take my seat is the first thing that you have to understand is that you cannot allow anybody to determine what success is to you. Don't base your success upon materialistic means. Don't base your success on the things that you have. Success comes from inside out. When I sat there, there were 385 students in my senior class in 1980, and I ranked 345th out of a class of 385. I don't say that braggingly. I say that because when I sat where you sit, I did not work hard. But I knew inside of myself that there was something inside of me that I could be anything that I wanted to be. I realized that if I worked hard and tried to achieve, I can do anything that I wanted to do. Who would have thought that 18 years ago, when I sat in your seat, that I would become the president of the Chillicothe Board of Education? Who would have thought 18 years ago that I would have been the youngest person to ever serve on the Board of Education? Who would have ever thought 18 years ago when I sat where you sit that I would be the first African-American in the history of Chillicothe to be president of the school board? 
I don't say that braggingly, but I say that inside of you, that no matter where you rank in this class, you can do all things through Christ if you work hard for it. The last thing that I want to leave with you is that when you leave this place today, you're going to go in separate directions. You may never meet again like you are right now, but whatever it is that you decide that you want to be, whether that is a sweet street sweeper or anything like that, be the best that you can be. You can do anything that you want if you look to the hills and know that you can make it. And the last thing that I want to share with you right now I've heard a lot of words of wisdom from a lot of people and one of the things that I reminded by right now there was an old slave woman in the south many years ago and she had only received a second grade education her great grandson had been to Stanford University and he received his bachelor's degree he later got accepted at Harvard University and the great grandmother took her grandson over to the side and said I want to tell you something and I know that what I'm about to say is grammatically incorrect, but the great grandmother looked at the son and said, son, be who ye is and not who ye ain't. Because if ye ain't who ye is, you is who you ain't. And what that is saying is that you've got to be who you are. You cannot allow anyone to determine where you go. You've got to understand that inside of you is greatness. You can do anything. And I believe that the class of 99, 98 are winners. And I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I can do all things. Come on. Come on now, get a little bit more excited than that. But you've got to believe it with inside of yourself that you can make it, you can make it, you can make it. And friends come and friends go but your heroes are to be your mothers and your fathers and those who raise you because no matter what happens in your life they're always going to be there so i say to you in the words of art kelly i believe i can fly i believe i can touch the sky i think about it every night and day when i get on my knees and pray i believe i can soar i'm gonna make it through that open door i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it I'm going to make it. God bless you. May God continue to smile upon you. And you're going to be great because you're already great. You're already great. You're already great. You're great. You've got to know you're great. You've got to believe that you're great. And you're going to make it. You're going to make it. And I know that what I'm about to do, I'm liable to get in trouble, but I'm gonna put down a prayer blessing to you that may God bless you, may God continue to smile upon you, that wherever it is that you go, God will guide your footsteps and know that no matter what comes your way, get up, if you fail, get up, don't stay in the pit because you can always get up, but you first have to believe it. Thank you again, and I know I went over two minutes, but that's all right, thank you. Now see, I, you would have thought I was in church somewhere, wouldn't you? <laughs> but what I wanted to say right now that on behalf of the entire Chillicothe Board of Education, we would want to ask Mr. Holland, has this class met all the requirements for graduation in the state of Ohio? Boy, I love this guy. Isn't he great? <laughs> And now, as principal of Chillicothe High School, I certify that these ladies and gentlemen have met all requirements for graduation as set forth by the Chillicothe Board of Education in the state of Ohio. I present this class to you, Reverend Gray, and recommend that they be granted their diplomas signifying graduation from Chillicothe High School as the class of 1998. The, the class will be recognizing two staff members who will congratulate each graduate and symbolically send them from their high school experience to their future pursuits. 
The staff members are Mr. John Caramico, language arts teacher, and Mr. Tony Woods, science teacher. I would like to make one very important announcement. As the students' names are called, I want to further recognize the families of each graduate by asking them to stand as their graduate's name is called. And very importantly, I ask the crowd to remain quiet during the awarding of the diplomas so that every name can be heard very clearly. First row, if you'd move to position. Marissa Phillips Altoff. On up, Molly. Molly Beth Alt. Thomas Philip Bonner. Allison Elizabeth Brown. Justin Clark Brown. Justin Todd Brown. Rebecca Jo Coward. Jody Megan Cunningham. Daniel John DeVivo. Noah Christian Hanners. Joel Robert Johnson. Brian Kelly. Bradley Allen Kleperic. Jeffrey Edward Lutmer. Marin Vanier Muckler. Carrie Ann Meininger. Rachel Alexandria Oyer. Neil S. Patel. Patricia Jeanette Reeder. Preston Wilson Roberts. Shannon Nicole Smith. Lori Beth Taylor. Hillary Lynn Vandicar. Melissa Lee Walls. Aaron Michael White. Mary Grace Williamson. Angela Jaskoski. Maureen Flanagan Ames. Rachel Elizabeth Brown. John Nelson Burdett. Devon Brooke Collins. Leanne Jeanette Comstock.
Angela Dawn Craze. Corey Adam Crawford. Lisa Marie D'Antoni. Adam Joseph Duffenball. Cheryl Ann Hafer. Adam Christopher Holm. Christina Marie Hertenstein. Lisa Michelle Huffman. Jesse Allen Lazier. Heidi Marie Madsen. Kristen Alicia Ann Park. Joshua Kane Paschke. John Brady Picklesheimer. Stephanie Clara Robb. Jennifer Nicole Russell. Lisa Marie Schoonover. Joshua Michael Smith. Paige Yaban Smith. Emily Jane Speakman. Charles Andrew Toth. Rebecca Elizabeth Town. Joseph Adam Urick. Jeremy Christian Benzant. Erica Ann Zangri. Sally Ann Abbott. Ilea Dawn Adams. Ryan Adcock. Paul Michael Allen. Ralph Carlton Anderson III. Jose Bernardo Aspra. Justin Paul Ascona. John William Barker IV. Megan Ray Barlage. Melissa Bernard. Jamie Ray Barrows. Tatiana Battistoni. Joseph Richard Betts. Angel Joe Blevins. Brandon Alex Blosser. Justin Lee Bolliard. Jared Michael Bottle.
Elizabeth Marie Britton. Jennifer Lynn Brown. Shauna Cox Bergen. Tanya K. Butcher. Mindy Jean Butterball. Joshua Denver Carver. Fabio Calaligo. Heather Lynn Christian. Misty Dawn Clary. John Andrew Kokenauer. Ryan Lynn Comfer. Kenneth Marshall Cope. Amy Crace. Nieves Crova. Kelly Joe Cutright. Kimberly S. Davis. Nicholas Edward Davis. Katie Jo Deem. Stephanie Ray DeLong. Trina Renee DeMitt. Kelly Philip Dennis. Katrina Deddy. Sarah Michelle Dilly. Heather Alina Downs. Dustin Anthony Dreyer. Sarah Jane Dreitzler. David Kenneth Dumbold. Donald Eugene Evans. Adam Philip Fox. Jason James Fox. Nathan Paul Freeland. David Goldsberry. Carrie May Grant. Robert Scott Green. Aaron Mark Grimes. Katie Elizabeth Grimshaw. Ryan Joseph Grubb. Joseph Dominique Guineri the third. Kyla Marie Gunter. Randy Jean Geisinger. Kylie Ann Hall.
Clint Marcus Howler. Amber Renee Hansen. Mike J. Harrison. Shannon K. Hartmus. James Riker Henshaw. Jacqueline Sue Hill. Casey Don Hill. Robert K. Hoffman. William Andrew Holly. Jessica Holmes. Kara Lynn Holt. Butch Lamar Howard. Jamie Lee Howard. Joshua Howard. Jody Marie Huffman. Jeremy Lee Hurd. Tara Joanne Pearls. Tasha Yovan Johnson. Christina Ann Jones. Nathan Kite. Jason Kinzer. Ben Cook. Lorreen Barry Kramer. Jessica, Jessica Lorreen Lambert. Scott Gregory Laffin. Tiffany Lynn Lawhorn. Chad Michael Lamaster. Sherry Lynn Link. Raymond Lively. Megan Ashley Lloyd. Jennifer Renee Lowe. Maggie Marie Lynch. Stephanie Margaret Malone. Daniel Marquise. Brooke Elizabeth Martin. Abby Motter. Graham S. Motter. Michelle Lynn Maynard. Amanda Marie McGinnis.
Leland R. McKeever. Brian Patrick McNeil. Heather Michelle Miller. Karen Maria Miller. Tara Elizabeth Miller. Jesus David Mitchell. Rochelle A. Mittler. Amanda Morgan. Rajesh K. Nair. Aaron Valerie Norman. Abigail Courtney O'Brien. Leisha Renee Oliver. Angela Lee Osborne. Michael Lee Oyer. Chad Parker. John Raymond Parks, Jr. Sean Peoples. I want to thank you. Nicole Monique Perry. Emanuela Parola. Michael Poland. Letty Post. Philip Michael Queen. Jeffrey Raglan. Cheryl Brianne Reinhardt. James Robinson. John Joseph Rohr. Justin Andrew Rausch. Andrea Jane Rout. Ryan Christy Rumasek. Lauren Elizabeth Schaefer. Farah Renee Shoemaker. Douglas John Schwimline. Jasper Charles Seward. Hannah Michelle Seymour. Shelly Ann Shoemaker. Amy Jane Simmons. John David Simmons. Nikki Skaggs. Blake Smallridge. Jody Lynn Smart.
Sarah Jane Smith. Siobhan Marie Smith. Jennifer Lynn Snow. Benjamin Alexander Southwick. Shane Wayne Sparks. Christopher Michael Stengel. Evan Michael Steele. Christopher Jason Steinbrook. Rachel Louise Stevens. Michael Allen Stewart. Leland Eric Stone. Joshua Scott Strasball. Jamie Lynn Stolley. Derek Lee Tannehill. Shane Michael Theobald. Emily K. Thomas. Kim William Townsend, Jr. Ricarda Marie Turner. Timur Vahidov. Gary Vaughn. Randall Joseph Vest. Brooke Renee Waters. Matthew Albert Weisenberger. Aaron Marcus White. Tamara Reagan Whitten. Seth A. Wilbur. Joshua Todd Williams. Brad Michael Williamson. Franklin Curtis Withrow. Brett Allen Wood. Thank you. Jessica Marie Woodfork. Jennifer Elaine Woods. Justin Woods. Rhiannon Young.
Daniel Zebek. Please rise as the senior members of the Symphonic Choir, Ryan Grubb, Jamie Howard, Christina Jones, and Nate Kite lead us in the CHS alma mater. And please remain on your feet as the Symphonic Choir leads us in their selection, a parting blessing.
Graduated seniors, you may now participate in the traditional turning of the tassels signifying your graduate status. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the 1998 graduates of Chillicothe High School. <laughs> this concludes our service. You're welcome to join the alumni on the gym floor. Thank you.